So feet hip width apart, toes straight ahead, sitting bones down, shoulder blades down, ribs in and up. So those lower ribs come toward your spine and then up toward your heart. That activates the core, but it doesn't clench it. You want to make sure that you stay with that nice activation so that it's supported. Crown to the ceiling, so you're stretching your spine nice and open, and relax your shoulders. Nice deep breaths, exhaling tension, inhaling, drawing your awareness inward, and just allow your body to get into its yoga frame of reference, always personal practice. And then inhale, bring your arms to shoulder level, stretch through your fingertips, Exhale, hands to your heart. Stretch to the front with your shoulders down. And then exhale, hands behind and clasp them behind you. Chest toward the ceiling, hands toward the floor. Stretch your head back and then pivot at your hips coming over. So keep those hands either gently clasped or with the base of the palms pressed together for a little bit more shoulder opening. Tuck in your chin, lift your sitting bones, let the back of your legs give a nice stretch. Spread your toes out. Oh, and don't forget to keep breathing. And then when you're ready to come up, keep that chin in, sitting bones go down, and wind your legs slowly back up and into the upper body for your back bend. So stretch back through the top of your head, down with your hands. And then on an inhalation, come upright, release your arms, and just take a moment feeling how your body is working. A little more circulation, getting energized. And then inhaling, bring the arms again to shoulder level. Hands to your chest, stretch to the front, keep those shoulders down, and clasp your hands the opposite way behind you. Again, lift your heart as you stretch your head back, and pivot over as you exhale. So just let the hands come up toward the ceiling, toward your head, as much as they want for those shoulders to get some more. Bend your knees a little if you need to, or lift the sitting bones even more, ribs toward your spine. And then slowly work your way back up. And then heart toward the ceiling, shoulders down, head back, upper body back bend. And just maximize or minimize however much of a back bend you need this morning. And then inhaling, come back upright, release your arms. Take a moment just again, feeling the circulation as things begin flowing back. Inhale the arms to the shoulders and palms toward the ceiling. Arms right over your shoulders, but those shoulder blades stay down. Pass your hands and clasp. Bring your arms back by your ears, sitting bones toward the floor, stretch your head up, keep everything facing forward as you lean to the side into that nice side stretch. So lateral motion to your spine, maximize through that rib stretch by pushing your foot down and out through your head and your hands. And then inhale, come back up, shoulders staying down, switch your hands around and clasp. And again, keep those arms by your ears, sitting on shoulder blades down, reach up, and again, facing forward, no twisting, lean over to that other side. Maximize as much as you want, up through the top of your body, down into that foot you lean on your arm. And then again, on an inhalation, come back up, release back to mountain. Just feel your sides a little bit more stretched, the ribs maybe a little bit more open. Oh, breathing more easily as well. And of course, we're going to twist. So remember, base of the spine and base of the skull go different directions. Inhale those arms up again, shoulder level, palms toward the ceiling, arms right above your shoulders, and clasp your elbows. So sitting bones down. Shoulder blades down, spine stretching apart as you breathe in, and exhale and twist. So the whole body, remember, is turning, not just your head. 
lengthen breathing in and pivot over in the twist for as much as you like this time. Keep breathing, just relax, deepening as much or as little as your body wants. Feeling that twist position forward then. You can keep the weight even on both feet. And then again, inhaling, work your way back all the way up. And chest coming high, elbows back, shoulders down as you come into that upper body from the back end, not your lower back. And again, inhale up, exhale to the center, and switch things around. Once more, stretch up through the top of your head, exhale, and twist the other way. Another breath in, and pivot on over as you exhale. And again, just deepen as much or as little as your body wants this morning, and relax. Keep breathing, and when you're ready, slowly work your way back up. And pull your elbows back and your chest high. Relax into that upper body for your back bend. And inhale to the top. Exhale to the center. Let's bring your arms up, palms out, back down to shoulder level. So swan diving, chest and chin lean. And just bring your body as flat to the floor as you can, parallel. And then stretching sitting bones and crown away. Fingertips out. And then drop into ragdoll and just hang. Take a moment there, breathing. Kind of bend your knees a little if you want to, or straighten everything out, stretching. You can bring your hands behind your legs for that extra pull, for that full lower back to get a little extra stretch, or not. And then arms back to the center, just hanging. As you keep your chin in and wind your way back into mountain pose. And take a moment there, just feeling your body. So let's separate the feet a little bit. Angle the toes out, knees toward the toes. So if you bend your knees, they go toward the toes. And we want to make sure that they don't go away the arm. And then we're going to keep the upper body straight up and sink down into horse position. So the knees go toward the toes, don't go too far out and go over to your knees. But keep the upper body upright so the hips stay open. So you're sinking down just a little bit. And then come back up and mountain pose. So we're gonna to continue to do those legs, but we're gonna add the upper body to it a little bit. So keep that core active. As you sink down, keeping that upper body nice and upright, sinking those knees just gently toward the toes. And then bring your arms up overhead, stretch. And then exhale and release, palms together, and then cup them. And then sinking down, raising your arms up. Switch the hands, the one in front and the one behind each time. And then inhale up. And exhale down, switch those hands, and again down, and one more time up. So feel the core being supportive, making sure that that spine stays nice and straight. And one more time. And up and back into mountain pose. So a little bit of focus on that solar plexus area, that energizing, empowering center that helps to make sure that you're working in the way you want to be working. So a little extra effort there. And kind of focus on the solar plexus. And we're going to move the ribs kind of around the solar plexus. So you can put your hands on your hips if you want to. We don't want to move the hips too much. We want to move the ribs around. So kind of push the ribs forward and then pull them back. And see if you can feel that core working a little bit as you do that. 
and then stop and then go the other way. And again, so you can keep the hips as even and stable as you can to so just move the ribs around. Oh, remember the breathing. And then coming back to mountain pose, just relax. So you feel a little bit more activated through that midsection. And then we'll inhale up and exhale all the way down and into child's pose. So hips back to your heels, hands, palms up, forehead down, just like always, find your position. Let that back get a good stretch. Shoulders relaxing, forehead toward the neck. And then bring your arms out in front. Now we're going to come up into table position. So remember, knees under your hips, feet straight back, wrists, elbows, and shoulders lined up. Remember, you can circle to get that wrist action going and restore the circulation. Or you can put the pad under the heel of your palm to give you a little less bend in your wrists. Keep your elbows as straight as you can. Lift those ribs toward the spine and toward your heart so that lower back gets a good support. And just a little bit toward your thumbs so you're not hunching up in that upper back. And then we're going to use our regular cat position. So just inhale, drop the ribs down, and lift the sitting bones. Look forward, crown toward the ceiling. And just sink the whole front of your body down toward the ceiling. Take a few breaths. <clears throat> and then push the Ribs up, sitting bones down, tucking your chin, top of the head down toward the floor. So arching up, angry cat. So get as high toward the ceiling as you can through that middle of your body. And then as you inhale, focus on the solar plexus, bringing it down as you lift the sitting bones and rotate face forward, crown up. And then keep the focus on the solar plexus in the middle of your body, reaching it up to the ceiling as you tuck into the forward leg. And as you inhale, bring the solar plexus down into the back bend. And then reaching the solar plexus up toward the ceiling and as you exhale into the forward leg. So we're going to do this a few times because the abs do like to work a little bit more. So we want to breathe with it, inhaling the solar plexus down, exhaling it toward the ceiling. And what we're going to do is we're going to energize the solar plexus even more by going a little bit faster. So as you do it, just kind of emphasize the inhalations and exhalations along with the movement of that middle part of your body in the solar plexus. So inhaling and exhaling and going a little faster and maybe a little further at each part of that circuit. So inhaling and exhaling, moving your body, getting energized through the solar plexus, really empowering yourself in the work you're doing. Inhaling, exhaling, working. So kind of like a little shine that could keep working at it, moving it, getting faster, getting more emphatic, doing it a little bit more, really building up that heat, and then come back to neutral and sink back and move your wrists around and go into child's pose. Now, as you're there, just feel that midsection where we were heating in the solar plexus, feeling a little bit more energized and activated. And then inhaling, come up and into stack position. So legs out to the front, sitting bones connected, and spine aligned. 
So stretch up through the crown, down into the sitting bones, ribs in and up, and shoulders relaxing, shoulder blades toward your waist. And just breathe. Notice how your body is working. I'll be here for 10 minutes. 10 minutes, okay. <laughs> okay, so we're working a little bit abs today, a little bit spine. So the knees are straight up, the toes are straight up, and then we're going to press into the sitting arms up through the crown, bend your knees, bring those heels in, and let the bottoms of your feet be flat on the floor, knees straight up. So it's a little rotation, remember, at the top of your thighs to make sure your knees don't go out. And then core activated, so focus on that solar plexus, ribs in and up, palms up, just to keep your shoulders down. And then a little bit of a lean back, staying on your sitting bones, not your sacrum. So don't get into the spine on this one, just stay on those sitting bones in your pelvis. And then one foot's going to come up. You can keep it down, you can make the Shin parallel, or you can extend the leg out so those sides are parallel and you're extending out through the base of your toes, whatever's good for you. If that hip flexor is going, mm, that's a little bit much, and you want that one more active lower the leg. Your choice. Just keep extending out through the base of the toes, up through the crown, making sure that that solar plexus is continuing to work for you. Remember, if you start vibrating a lot, you can put that foot back down anytime, or you can just keep doing it because you love to activate that empowerment energy. And then if you haven't already, go ahead, put down. Inhale, sit up, take a break, or stay energizing through that core. Your choice. Keep breathing, shoulders relaxed, arms out. Feet flat, knees straight up, not out to the sides, and lift that just a little or more, or extended, your choice. Remember, personal practice, you do what's right for you. So if you start vibrating a lot really soon, you don't have to stay in that position. You can lower the leg or put the foot closer to the floor or do whatever you need to do to allow that energy to do what it needs to do for you. It's not a competition, it's just a personal practice. And again, if you haven't already put the foot down, go ahead and release. Sit up, take a break, give that core a little bit of breathing room, and relax. So one more time, both feet together this time, or you know, you don't have to do anything, you can just stay in that starting position. So again, core active, a little bit of an incline, but not onto your sacrum, palms up. And again, both feet up a little, or more, or all the way out. Or you can hold your toes so that those hip flexors don't have to work so hard, and you can work that core a little bit more easily, or not. So breathe, extend out through the base of your feet if you are holding your toes, or through the base of the toes themselves, if you've got those arms extended, or wherever you are, just do what's right for your body. And of course, keep breathing. And when you've had enough, feet come down, and legs extend, and just give yourself a little breathe. So let's see, bring your feet to the end of the mat. And we're going to roll down onto our legs. So take a moment, reclined integration. Just breathe. Feel that surface beneath you just kind of settle into it. Feel around, get that sacrum nice and connected. And Now we're going to press the low back down, bend your knees, and bring your feet in. Heels near your sitting bones, knees straight up. So again, a little rotation at the top of the thighs to keep that alignment. 
Sitting bones toward your heels, press the back down. And then raise the ribs, roll onto the sitting bones and onto your shoulder blades, letting that space under your back arch up into that back bone. And then pulling the whole spine to the floor, sitting bones sliding toward your heels, really connecting through the abs all the way down into that surface beneath you. And then inhaling, ribs up, sitting bones down, coming into that back bendy arch through the lower back. So a little bit of work through that core, inhaling up, exhaling down, just like we did earlier when we were in table position, getting that core energized and activated, moving it from the pressing down to the inhaling up as fast or slow, as emphatically or gently as your body needs. So strengthening that lower back and toning those abs a little bit because they're opposing muscle groups, they work together. And then just come back to neutral. Take a moment to breathe and relax. And extending your legs out and bring the arms overhead. And we're going to do the yoga sit up. So remember, when you do this one, you want to lead with your heart. So inhale, arms straight above you toward the ceiling. Lead with your heart and guide your body all the way up to your seated position, and then pivot at your hips, reach for your hands, get a good stretch through the back of your body, and then straight through the spine as you feel with your chest and chin leading forward. And then inhale, and sit back up in staff position. And let's see, let's come up on our knees. And if you have padding, you might want to be padded under your knees. And then tuck a little bit toward each other, hands on your spine, rotate the elbows toward each other so that the whole palm of your hand is supporting that lower back area. So feel the palm at the lower shoulder blade, fingertips towards your hips. Elbows in, expand across the heart. Breathe, keep those hips right above your knees. No, yes, knees. Try to keep those body parts straight. And push the top of your head straight toward whatever's behind you. So chest high, heart opening, and whole front of your body coming into an arch. And of course, that lower back is in a little bit of a back bend, so don't overdo it. If that's a challenge. And just expand through the whole back of your body, lengthening out through the top of your head. And then bring your chin back towards your chest, release your arms, and sink back onto your heels. If you pat it under your knees, release it. And come into child's pose for a nice little forward bend. Take a moment and forward. And then we're going to move the knees toward the edges of the mat a little bit. Hands forward and pivot up. Slide those legs back. And we're going to come all the way down onto your belly. On the mat. Hands, palms up, forehead down, forehead to the side. And just take a moment to breathe and relax. Rest in crocodile. If you've got your head to one side, Exhale, turn it toward the other side so your neck gets even on the stretch. Okay, so now face the mat with your head, slide your chin forward. And then you keep your hands next to your palms up or down. Down is, I think, the official position. And then we're going to keep the feet hip width apart, sink into your hips. Pull this down into the mat. Let's keep that chin slid forward unless it gets too much on your neck, in which case you can just tuck your chin or your forehead to the mat. 
And then we're going to push back through the right base of the toes. And then keeping the hips both down, lift that leg with the knees straight as high as it wants to go. So just keep pushing out through the base of the toes as you lift that whole leg. And remember, you want to make sure it's not going out to the side, but straight up. So again, a little rotation in at the top of the thigh if you need to do that. Keep breathing, stretching it out, lifting as much or as little as you want. And remember, you can keep both hips down. You don't want to really lean to the side, so don't lift that hip too much off the floor if you want to lift that leg really hard. So keep breathing and maximizing the stretch out through the chin and out through the toes. And then on an exhalation, slowly lower the leg and relax. So feel the circulation. This is strengthening your back, but it also tones your abs because it all works together. And again, <clears throat> chin sliding forward, hips relaxing down, feet hip width apart, this time focusing on that left leg. And stretch it out through the base of the toes, hips down as you lift that leg up as high as it wants to go. And just allow your body to relax. That whole torso sinking down into the hips, into the front of your body as you extend up through the base of your toes, up through the chin, and maximize or not. Remember, personal practice, your leg can be any height off the floor that it wants. Take a breath, stretch it out, maximize or minimize, and when you're ready to release, Exhale that leg back. Tuck your forehead to the mat. Give a stretch to your neck a little bit. And relax. And then we're going to do both legs together. You can keep your hands, palms down, or bring them under your hips, or clasp your hands underneath you and straighten your elbows and get your arms and shoulders helping to support. Press the hips down into your hands. Stretch that chin back forward. Reach out through the base of your toes. You can keep them hip width apart. And then pushing out through the legs, through the base of the toes, lift with those hips, pressing down into your arms or hands. And just lift it as high again as you want. It's your choice. Strengthening your back as much as it needs working through the whole core, stretching the chin forward. And of course, remember if those legs start vibrating and that core starts working too hard and that back starts aching, just exhale those legs down anytime you want them to. Otherwise, one more breath in, one more reach up through the base of the toes, and then slowly exhaling all the way. And this time, release your arms, bring your hands under your shoulders, and again, we're going to press back and into child's pose. And so take a moment and breathe. And then inhale and sit up and bring your legs up in front to the end of the neck. And of course, we're going to. Use the core for control as we roll all the way down. So take a moment for your reclined integration before we do our twist and relaxation by Jessica Howe. So go ahead and move back and forth, get that sacrum nicely connected. Press your back down and mm, let's see. Okay, options on this one. We're going to bring the legs straight up to the ceiling, uh, arms out to two position. Press the back down, and you can either bend your knee and then bring your leg, right leg up to the ceiling, or you can lift that right leg straight up to the ceiling and using the core for more support that way. So depending on how much you worked your abs already, you can bend the knee, or you can just do it straight. Keep the bottom of the foot pressing up toward the ceiling as much as you can, leg as straight as you can. 
and arms out, palms up straight out from your shoulders. And then take a breath, and as you exhale, we're gonna roll all the way over to the left side. Foot come into the floor, hands together on the floor, and you're on your whole side. If you need to pad under your head so that you don't strain your neck, you can do that. And then we're going to hold the foot with your hand or your leg with your left hand. And your right hand comes right above the shoulder toward the ceiling, palm open. And then the back of the hand leads right at shoulder level back into the twist as you look at that arm that moves behind you. So the more you hold your foot, the more you're going to get that lower back in the twist. So if you don't want too much in the lower back right now, you can hold any part of your leg. And relax. So shoulders coming down, arm coming down. If the hand doesn't reach the floor, that's okay. Gravity will work when your spine is ready to twist that much. But just allow the whole body to move into the twist. Turn your head as well for that upper neck and shoulder. So breathing deep, hand coming down, shoulder coming down for that middle back, and foot pressing away in front of you for that lower back twist as much or as little as your body needs there. Take a few breaths, just relax. And if your hand isn't all the way to the floor, just let gravity do the work. It doesn't need to get there, it's okay. Whatever it is. Just breathe. The more emphatically you exhale, the more your spine will release, and the more your whole body will relax. So a few breaths here, just releasing into the twist. And when you're ready to release from the twist, just let go of your leg or foot, roll all the way onto your back, and then leading with the heel, Lower your legs slowly using that core for support as you come back into close position. And just take a moment there, feeling the body, knowing, of course, that you have to balance things out and do the other side. So, again, just kind of press that back down in the lower back area. Bring your hands, palms up at T position, straight out from your shoulders. Keep the back pressed down and either straight leg all the way up or bend it first and bring that leg up to the ceiling. So once again, the foot is flexed, the whole bottom of the foot is evenly pressing up toward the ceiling and that leg is as straight as it's comfortable for you. So notice the core pressing down, keeping you activated. And we're going to this time roll all the way to the right side. So go ahead, bring the foot down, and your hands together, head to the floor. If it doesn't like being there again, you can pad under your head so your neck doesn't strain. So get situated all the way on the right side of your body. Take your right hand, hold your foot or your leg, and bring your left arm straight up to the ceiling. Look at that open palm right above your shoulder. And then looking at the hand as you lower the hand at shoulder level behind you, back of the hand lowering toward the floor, coming into your twist. So again, the more you turn your head, neck and shoulder in the twist. The more that arm comes down, shoulder comes down, the more that middle back is in the twist. The more you hold your foot and push it away from you, the more your lower back is in the twist. So don't overdo any part that needs not overdoing. And just relax. <sighs> Exhaling tension, letting ligaments release, just allowing your body to sink as deeply into the twist as you need. And remember, one side may be tighter than the other. That's not unusual. Just go to wherever it's appropriate on this side. Deep breaths, just relaxing. And again, as you release and relax into your twist, you may feel adjustments, let them happen. Never force anything in the twist. Just allow the arm to lower as it's ready to, and your body to relax as much as it wants. 
And when you're done with your twist, just let go of your foot or leg, roll onto your back, get everything appropriately connected through that core, through that sacrum, and then slowly lowering the leg back to the back and into corpse position, getting ready for a relaxation. So just soften your body, let it sink, and just allow yourself to feel the heat that may be generated through that midsection today. Relax your shoulders, hands, palms up slightly away from your sides, so that whole upper body torso can relax. Now allow the legs to be in whatever position is comfortable, letting that lower body relax as well. Soften your face and your jaw. And exhale, and just let your body sink heavily, deeper into that earth embrace. You close your eyes and focus inward, just breathing and relaxing, allowing your body just to let the tension go. And as your body sinks deeper into the earth embrace, let awareness of your body release from your wide mind. And as you do that, other thoughts will drift in. Just let them drift out as well. Remember always, it's the job of your mind to produce those thoughts. It's your choice whether you pay attention. At this moment, forget the past. Release the future. Just allow your awareness to float in the moment. Breathing in and out, letting the thoughts drift away without attention. No need to focus on any thoughts or your body. Just let everything go. And focusing on your breath, just let it draw your awareness inward. Deep and into the peace within. Let the peace fill your mind, fill your body, fill you completely with peace. And if you want, just keep breathing, relaxing, releasing. But if it's time to draw energy and awareness back to the moment and prepare for the rest of your day, just do that. Breathing deeply, bending your knees, allowing your body to stretch in whatever way is comfortable for you. And when you're ready for your final yoga hug of appreciation, press your back down, draw your knees toward you, tuck your arms around as much as feels right. Give yourself a good appreciative yoga hug in any way that's right for you. And when you're done with the appreciation and hug, bring your feet back to the mat, roll to the side, and sit back up when you're ready to get ready for the rest of the day. Thanks for joining me.